In recent months, northwestern Nigeria has faced devastating attacks from armed bandits, particularly in the states of Zamfara, Katsina, Kaduna, Niger, and Sapatu. Such attacks are driven by many overlapping factors, including cattle rustling, the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, illicit artisanal mining, youth unemployment, poverty, and inequality. This is further compounded by the weakened, stretched, and demoralized security services who are deployed in 35 of Nigeria's 36 states and will soon enter the second decade of their war against Boko Haram. It is estimated that many of the armed bandits are of Fulani origin, as are many of the victims. Banditry, which includes armed robbery, murder, rape, and castle rustling, is present in Nigeria and in other West African countries. What could be done to effectively tackle the growing menace? Sahara TV spoke with the Abuja based security expert, Mr. Ben Okeze. Mr. Ben, let me start by asking you what is fueling the waves of bandit attacks and massacre that has ruptured life in northern Nigeria? Sir? Uh, thanks a, a lot. Um, you see, uh, when we, when, when, when we started talking of banditry, I had to research a little bit. I have been to that area, uh, most of the states, Zamfara, Kaduna, all those places that uh, we've been having uh, issues of banditry. And you know, many of them have borders with the Northeast, the main uh, uh, place where Boko Haram insurgency has been taking place. Now, what many people don't understand, you know, is that um, the, when the Bratai uh, administ uh, uh, men came on board in 2015, uh, uh, a lot of these um, uh, Boko Haram men were, were, were decimated. So what many of them did was that they now flushed into the inside inner states. That's the hill, hilly areas of those states. And they started another sort of recruitment, you know, because from the statement of the governor of Zamfara, you will know the governor said that some of these bandits are well known in the states. In other words, what it means, uh, these Boko Haram boys that left, that they've left uh, the Boko Haram enclave, moved into Inderland and then recru started recruiting these boys, armed them. They are already aware of how to uh, uh, get arms. And the only thing they needed was how to go into Inderland, carry out. Um, um, kidnapping so as to make money, uh, invade markets so as to get a uh, full stop because they are, they are, they are still in, uh, in, uh, in an enclaved area or, or in, in the, in the hill, hill area of, uh, of those areas. Like in Kaduna, you know, there are some hills around Kaduna. Those are the places where they were staying. So uh, many of them are there, just, you know, one, they are there to foment trouble to some of them are there, you know, um, just to destabilize governments. And three, some of them are there based on the, uh, because they have not been uh, cleansed of the ideology they imbibed from Boko Haram. So those things are still working in them. You know, human being is a spirit. So when you indulge them into all those things, it takes a long time. That's why you see when the military is talking about um, uh, you know, uh, repentant Boko Haram people, you know, they go through a lot of uh, uh, cleansing, spiritual and uh, otherwise, that are, are, not men, are not known to members of the public before they can be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, brought out of, of those uh, enclaves. So, but the major thing is that, one, these are boys that, uh, uh, you know, they, they have another orientation another idea, ideology. 
So those are the things they just want to destabilize government and see how they can implant, you know, the issue of uh, 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 their religion, you know, on, 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 on some of the big places. You will see that most of the places they are, they are really attacking are the areas where uh, either more of Christians are dwelling or they just go and destabilize uh, where Muslims are, just to scatter them like they did with uh, you know uh, the massacre in uh, in uh, in the in in a, in a, in, a, in a Muslim in Muslim uh, 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 yeah, Muslim Muslim uh, mosque, you know. So those are the things they are they are just into. Not until uh, some of the uh, measures you know to curtail some of these excesses are uh, put in place, we might continue to have it very hard with them. Now, let me get your view on this. Uh, there have been several army operations, uh, military operations, which have been launched, but uh, most have been largely uh, ineffective. Why is the military or the Nigerian military continuing to struggle to contain the violence by these bandits uh, this time? Sir? The military is meant for external aggression. The police is meant for internal insurrection. This work, most especially, is meant for the police. When we had Matashine in those days, police moved in. It is when the police is overwhelmed that the police now set up another arm of the police, which is the mobile police, you know, to come in. But when there is no mobile police and the police is overwhelmed, then the military will now come in. The military uh, don't, there are certain things they don't understand about internal, uh, 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 internal security. Uh, you've got to understand that whenever the military comes into anything internal, they as I state most of the thing, they, they, they over, overblow it. it. Let's say for instance, when they want to do roadblocks, you see, when they do roadblocks, their own is always different from what the police is used to because they are not for all those things. Now, the military, when the military comes, the military always aims at targets. You know, they don't have the patience for all the, you know, what the police is used to. Police love to go, you know, into the... Uh, uh, into the communities to extract information, you know, go into the community to, to find out, investigate. But the military don't have all those patients. The military just goes straight on, you know, and then, you know, carry out the attack. Once they notice, they hear that these bandits are in particular place, they just go there and then, you know, either they use the Air Force uh, now the Air Force is having so many uh, airplane, uh, recognizance uh, airplane, you know, that can handle most of those jobs. So they, their own is just to, you know, go on attack. That's why we are, uh, in most time, it's not that they are not having uh, successes. They've been having successes, you know, like in Kaduna, they had successes. In Sampara, they had successes. But most times, it's just that targeted uh, group. Once they do, they, 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 they unleash their terror on, on, on the attack on them, they succeed. And then those ones, the bandits go back and regroup again. And you've got to under, also understand that these bandits, they have been doing a lot of recruitment on the ground. They recruit from Chad. They recruit from Niger. They recruit from, uh, we, we also have uh, uh, leftovers of uh, Libyan, uh, pro, uh, the Libyan, uh, 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 you know, left outs, you know, who have uh, come to join is Iswas, you know, are also there. So many of them have congregated, you know, be uh, because they all have one one goal, and which is to see how they can implant uh, their, their 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 religious their religious beliefs. So those are the things that uh, uh, the Nigerian government is uh, facing, and most especially the military, and uh, not until. Uh, uh, we continue to appreciate and uh, encourage the military. You know, uh, you, you can see, you, you hardly see, it's just a present that we are now seeing the police now having a joint attack, uh, 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 this thing with the military. You know, and the police now goes with the military. You know, 
you 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 will notice that uh, we've not been seeing more of uh, our mobile policemen on the on the road or every uh, anywhere. You know, it's just now that they are bringing them out to start. You know, joining the military for uh, such uh, uh, operational uh, activities. Now, state governments uh, in the region have uh, resorted to uh, signing controversial and secretive. Uh, peace agreements with uh, some of the bandits and vigilantes now to stop the killings, the kidnappings, and the attacks. Uh, but in, in most instances, the deals uh, often uh, unravel, and uh, it, 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 uh, it falls apart. And uh, we've seen that uh, the efforts or the response by the government itself is compromised by the decade-long war with jihadists uh, and uh, the uh, militants or insurgents with security forces uh, being stretched, armed groups have been able to operate with little resistance, especially in the Northwest. And as we call for state policing, uh, community policing, that's not the fact that the police themselves have been heavily overwhelmed. I mean, do you feel that community policing is, a, is one of the strategies to look at at this point in time? Yeah, you see, um, the issue of... Uh the governors having a peace pact with uh, some of these uh, uh, bandits. Uh, many of us uh, who are in this industry, we have uh, kicked against it. It's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the best. It's, uh, they are ill-advised, and they have been seeing it, that the whole thing is boomeranging, that because these are... You, you, don't, you don't negotiate with... Uh, with uh, with uh, bandits, you don't negotiate with uh, terrorists. You 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 call them. You make them to submit to an extent that uh, to a point where they cannot look right or look left for any help. That is when you call them, and then they will now uh, be subjected to to adhere to your own. Uh, this that's the tactics the military is using. You know, uh, civilians, they did not go for any military training. They don't have any military uh, this thing, except the, what their security advisors are giving them. And some of their security advisors may not be so exposed. You know, so, but the thing is that uh, they found out that uh, from Niger State to Zanfara to all of them that have uh, gone on peace. Uh, packed with this this uh, voice that they have seen that uh, it, it has not helped issues because at the end of the day they come back to hunt them again because when you give them uh, peanuts and uh, what they have is uh, they have exhausted it they will come back to look for more again so but nonetheless uh, on the aspect of uh, uh, whether the issue whether what they need is uh, uh, community policing or state police. I have been one of those advocates of uh, state police. Even the former president, IBB, have you know uh, added his voice to uh, state police. Um, many, 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 many people have uh, added their voices to uh, that we need state police. One. Why do we have need state police? Very simple reason. Well, yes, we know that the Nigerians we, we have a way of uh, circumventing and then uh, mis misusing uh, such such a uh, no noble or uh, novel uh, ideas. But nonetheless, you put it to test and then let it uh, move on. And then where there are problems, you correct it. That's why there is uh, the, the legislative arm and the and the judiciary to help to. You know, uh, restructure it very well so that uh, nobody will make will will overuse it for anything because everybody is thinking of uh, politics. When there's, there's politics, the uh, uh, the governor in that state will uh, use the, the, the. That's not that's that, that doesn't make. You won't say because uh, a child there are robbers in uh, on the streets. There are these things on the street that you will not allow your child to go to school. You will allow your child to go school. Then you will monitor the child and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you make uh, specific arrangements for uh, the safety of that child, you know, so that he will not be hurt. Nonetheless, um, why we need state police? Let's take, for instance, in 2002, 
when uh, uh, Boko Haram leader Yusuf uh, 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 Muhammad started, when he started regrouping and grouping uh, young young boys and giving them food and all those things, if we had good, if there was state police, one, the state police apparatus would have been used to know that somebody is you know who don't have anything to do and Nigerians is is is, is, uh, is empowering them they want to know why is he doing this what for what for what purpose they will have found out all the details about who he is and uh, where is he coming from and all those things all those things will have been taken uh, into cognizance and then might be uh, at, at the rate, at the stage where the thing, uh, you know, uh, escalated to what it is uh, today, it wouldn't have. The state police will have handled it. The, po uh, the state co uh, governor will have been fully in charge, not uh, going to be uh, calling uh, IG in, uh, in Abuja to come and do, or calling the DSS uh, uh, DG to come and do, or calling the army, or calling the president. He is the full security, security officer of his state. He will do, because he has a, a, a group of uh, security uh, men and women who are well knowledgeable, knowledgeable in all these things. So they will, they will have uh, uh, given him much information on the what and what the motives of that man is. And it won't have gotten to this stage. That is, you have, they will have nipped it in the board. They will have been very proactive in uh, their... So what state police will have to be doing for us is uh, like what we have with this, uh, uh, what really happened recently. You know, everything will have been taken full, full look at uh, the Lagos state uh, governor going hard to go to Abuja to go and be report. He is fully in charge. He's the is the chief security officer of the of the state. He will be telling the commissioner what to do, not a situation where he will tell the commissioner something and the commissioner will have to go to Abuja to seek uh, advice. Might be the advice uh, he will get from Abuja will be not in tandem with what the governor is saying and he will not obey the governor. It will not be like that. So the governor will be fully in charge. So anything that happens, will be, that's why we need a state police. All right. Uh, let me get you... Let us get to you. What do you say as an expert can be done to improve effective community policing mechanisms that is capable of addressing the hinterland peculiar security challenges that we have? You see, uh, the state police is like uh, uh, the, mo the modern hand. The community policing is like the egg. Uh, you, you, you can't do community policing without state police. And you can't do state police without community policing. Okay. Com community policing will assist state police you know, in achieving its proper uh, aim and objective. Community policing is not what we are seeing now. That you are giving people uniform, you are you you are now uh, training them in uh, security. No, community policing is the community assisting the police. That is what it means. You just go to a, 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 a every community, talk to them about what it means to police their community, what and what they should look out for. What are what they should observe? Let me give you an example. This is community policy in London. A woman who is a retired teacher was coming every time she comes out on her balcony, her balcony to just to relax. She notices that there is a boy who is always entering a car that has been parked there. The owner is dead, so we park. He will enter the car. But the woman found, discovered that the boy was always carrying a bag and we put him there. So she started noting down the time the boy would come and, and put the bag and the time the boy would come and take the bag. And they found out that, that they were a, he was a, a, an appendage of a, a, gang, a gang robbery. She picked the phone and called 
all the uh, nine, nine, uh, 199. And immediately they came, they found out, they, they waited for the boy. Immediately he came, they arrested him and traced him only to find out that was how the, the, the uh, community. So you can see that was community policing. That's what it's all about. It's not all this one they are coming to use your uh, young boys. It must not be young boys. Community policing is everybody. Everybody. You look you you help you are helping the police to to do their work and also to do your own work also you are assisting in every facet of security you know whether you are taking your children to school you saw a car parked and you look where you were passing by the car you saw a bag and then you saw the 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 the, the, the boot of, of of a gun coming out your job is to pick your phone and call the police Ah, I saw a car parked at such a place, you know, that I saw something that, 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 that looks like a gun inside it. Please check. That is community policy, not what we are seeing now. Community policy, everybody's responsibility, the old, the young, and the, the elderly, everybody, the youth, everybody is to be involved. They don't need to, to it's just for you to give them uh, a particular uh, sense of belonging, to give them, to let them know where they can report incidents to. And when they report, you keep their identity, you know, uh, sacrosanct. You don't call, disclose like we used to have in those days. You know, so these are the things we call community pol policing. Then the state police is the police that is really recognized by government that will do the real work of uh, you know, arresting and prosecution. You know, community policing cannot do that. Community police is just to give information. That is what is the community. But uh, what they are doing now, budgeting uh, millions, billions for, for community. That is a way of uh, 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 trying to uh, let let me not let me not be too. Deep. But it's, uh, it's it has corrupt tendencies. You know, following it. If you follow what community policing is in other countries. You will see that it is just you know to assist the uh, the regular police, the conventional police, to do their work and make it much much easier, so that they can get much information about the uh, the the activities of criminals. Finish. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben Okeze. We appreciate your insightful analysis and the contributions as far as this issue is concerned.